Today we're going to be talking about gestational radiation risks, namely the risks of radiation while in utero. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowRadiologyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content for folks in the radiology field, especially radiologic technologists. If that sounds good to you, click below on subscribe and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. So specifically again today we're going to be talking about the risks to a baby in utero at the different stages all the way from after implantation until the baby's born. There's different types of risks in terms of the different outcomes which can occur and the likelihoods of those outcomes at the different stages along the baby's gestation. And we're starting now. So the possible effects of radiation, and there's something called hereditary effects, and those are if there's radiation on the sperm or on the ova before the embryo has been formed. And then here we're talking about radiation after the point where the embryo has been formed up until birth. So these are the gestational effects that we're going to talk about today. And we'll talk about the different effects which can occur, and those range from uh, mortality or deadly radiation dose through malformations, which are microcephaly, mental retardation, and growth changes, and an increased risk of cancer. So a simplified timeline, and this corresponds to the animal experiments have been, which have been done, is to think about three phases at a very high level. So the first phase is pre-implementation. So you have an embryo and it's just a few days old and it has not yet implanted into the lining. That's the pre-implementation stage. And then the stage of you know two to six weeks approximately is when organogenesis is occurring. So those organs are being formed and in the pre-implementation stage, there's no differentiation of the cells. And then that starts to happen in the organogenesis phase where cells start to become differentiated and start to have a destiny of this type of cell is going to be this type of organ eventually. And then in week six through birth, that's the fetal period. And we'll talk about each of these periods and the radiation damage which could occur. So first in the pre-implementation stage, because like we talked about just now, there is no uh, differentiation of the cells. And because there's no differentiation of the cells, there can't be specific damage to, for instance, the head or a given organ. So if there is radiation damage which does occur, it will be either death or there will not be damage. So you can't have potential specific side effects that occur this early in when you have an embryo. And then in the organogenesis stage, so that's in the stage of a few weeks. During that phase, like we just said, the organs are actively being developed. And during that phase, it's relatively radiosensitive, especially as far as birth abnormality and neonatal deaths. So a dose of two gray in mice experiments caused 100% abnormality in those mice and microcephaly or small head size and reduced growth have been the things that are most commonly seen from atomic bomb survivors, which received the radiation dose during this critical time. Then finally in the fetal stage, so six weeks through birth, so the organs are essentially formed, so there is a lower risk of abnormalities during this phase, but there are risks in mice of permanent growth retardation, and it's been documented 
in atomic bomb survivors that during that 8 to 15 week period, there can also be mental retardation at a higher rate. And there's also a cancer induction uh, potential. And the estimated rate is about 6% higher per gray, a 6% higher chance of cancer per gray. And um, therefore, after a pregnancy is declared, the radiation dose, which is allowable, is only 0.5 millisieverts per month. So just to summarize, these are the same things that we just said on those last slides, but now it's just put into one specific table here. In the first week, pre-implementation, when you have an embryo, in animal experiments, there's been demonstrated prenatal death. And in atomic bomb survivors, it's assumed that there was prenatal death because the individual probably never would have known, actually, that there was an embryo that had not yet implanted. And then organogenesis, during that phase, in animal experiments, there has been neonatal death and abnormalities. And then microcephaly was demonstrated in atomic bomb survivors. Then during the fetal period, growth retardation in animal experiments and mental retardation has been demonstrated in atomic bomb survivors, along with an increased risk of cancer. So that increased risk of cancer is estimated to be about 6% per gray. But then if we put this in the context of diagnostic radiology doses, so all those radio, all of those doses that we were just talking about, they were on the order of gray or multiple gray. And in diagnostic radiology, we're talking about orders of magnitude of less radiation dose than the doses in those studies. So both the atomic bomb survivors and the radiation doses, which were necessary to see the really high increases in abnormalities in the animal experiments are significantly higher radiation doses. So if we look in the literature, for instance, at this educational literature by McCullough et al., there's a nice summary that discusses the Committee on Obstetricians and Gynecologists that published the following statement. Women should be counseled that the x-ray exposure from a single diagnostic procedure does not result in a harmful fetal and harmful fetal effects. Specifically, exposure to less than 5 rad or 50 milligray has not been associated with an increase in fetal abnormalities or pregnancy loss. So, at a high level, what we talked about are the fact that the radiation sensitivity and the type of radiation damage which occurs during different points in gestation is very different based on which point in gestation you are. So pre-implementation, it's either all or nothing. So either it will be a loss of life or there will be no effect. And then during organogenesis, there can be specific abnormalities. And during the fetal period, we're looking more at the possibility of retardation and growth retardation. And all of these issues that we're talking about are occurring with doses on the order of grays. And in diagnostic radiology, we're talking about orders of magnitude, lower doses. And therefore, we should counsel our patients that the fetal risk is very low. And typically in the discussion, the diagnostic benefit of the exam is going to outweigh the radiation risk. You know about gestational risk now? Also, even before the implantation, it's of interest to know about fertility risks and potential hereditary risks 
if the uh, oversight, namely the sperm or the egg, is subject to radiation damage. So check out that video. We're sticking around to the end. <laughs>